Bizarre Brain Comics. Oh, mighty Isis. Hello, little Gary here for Bizarre Brain Comics. Uh, more like to look at some old comics, examine the characters, the stories, the art, and the creators. Now, I shot this video once before, several weeks ago, and I must have accidentally deleted it before I got it uploaded, because <coughs> I thought I had it uploaded. Anyway, so here we are again, and we are talking about The Mighty Isis. I have two issues right here. We're going to talk about this one right here, The Mighty Isis from DC Comics, 1977, number seven. If you're not familiar with Isis, she goes back to uh, to television. Take a little look in the big book of knowledge. Hmm. Okay, the Mighty Isis, number seven, 1977, Fangs of the Serpent King by artist Mike Vosberg and written by Jack Harris. And The Secrets of Isis was a live action superhero series from Filmation originally aired from 1977, correction, 1975 to 77 on CBS Saturday mornings. It was the first live action show to lead a female superhero character, predating both Wonder Woman and the Bionic Woman. Mm -hmm. And it stars actress Joanna Cameron as Isis and her alter ego, Andrea Thomas, who was a high school science teacher. And it had se uh, several crossover episodes with Shazam and is... Uh, Kind of a spinoff thereof. Um, unfortunately, just a year or two ago, we we lost uh, Joanna Cameron. She was a, a fine actress and a, and a very lovely lady. And uh, she, uh, get, for several years, uh, she guest starred on on various uh, TV shows. And then uh, just a few years after after the show, she um, gave up acting for for other endeavors. But if you happen to be lucky enough to ever see the live action Spider-Man TV show, she as she guest starred in a in a two part episodes uh, and <laughs> in which she is another journalist working with Peter Parker and in the course the uh, the rich villain kidnaps her. And he keep the whole time he's got got her. He keeps her in a very skimpy white bikini. <laughs> so she and she looks very good in it. <laughs> but this is the seventies. In comics, okay, DC Comics published several issues of a tie-in comic by various creators. And since then, the character has been rolled into the main DC superhero universe, but her name has been changed from Andrea Thomas to Adriana Tomas. And this version was reintroduced in, in 2006 and tied to the Shazam character Black Adam. And she also made an appearance in the CW series Smallville. And a version of her is also featured on DC Comics, uh, correction, DC's Legends of Tomorrow TV series on the CW as Zari Tomaz and still another version of her as uh, Sarah Shahi 
is to be featured in the upcoming Black Adam movie starring Dwayne Johnson. So she is a recurring and prominent character in the DC Universe. Even though she was originally created for television. So, let's go take a little look. At Andrea Thomas. Also known as the Mighty Isis. And here we are. See the, the cover of the Mighty Isis number seven. And I presume this cover is drawn by um, the interior artor, artist, uh, what's his name, Vosberg. Yeah, Mike Vosberg. Before we get into that, I want to take a little look at this one here. This is uh, number one. Now, the uh, series, TV series, was very juvenile, and they were very juvenile problems and very few real big threatening menaces. And uh, they stepped that up a bit for the comics, because comics, they can do more. And while still uh, starting off a bit on the on the on the juvenile side, uh, the uh, the menaces were were much grander with uh, the stakes much higher. Here we have this lovely, lovely cover, which was drawn by Kurt Schaffenberger, who is a longtime DC artist, uh, on primarily on Superman titles. And going back to Fawcett, uh, doing a lot of work on uh, uh, Marvel Family for Captain Marvel Shazam. And I really like this cover. It's a very lovely cover. It's a really, really nice depiction of that aircraft and this figure of, of Isis, Kurt Schaffenberger did. It's some really lovely line work and it's probably one of my fam uh, favorite images of of Isis. And then the interior, okay, this original story was uh, was drawn, uh, correction, written by Danny O'Neill, who was uh, best known for his, for his, well, great work on, on uh, Batman, but also uh, Green, La Green Lantern, Green Arrow, uh, won some awards for that stuff. And in this art, we see it was uh, drawn by Rick Estrada, penciler, who I mostly know as as an inker, but it was inked by the great, great Wally Wood. And he has a, is known so much for his, uh, his especially his, his very lovely female figures, which, and... Uh, so his inking shows shows through here these great female figures of of Isis. And here we have a, a flashback on the origin of, of Isis, and this great figure right here. It's all just just some some wonderful stuff. And here we have in the sto this story the mighty Isis and feel the fangs of the serpent king There's my splash panel splash page and this male figure here this is uh rick mason who is andrea thomas's boss that's the high school where she works and this is uh this is even more mature story with even uh, a more powerful villain and uh, higher stakes and i really like they got the uh the egyptian hieroglyphs here in the background there. And it starts, it's right at the begin. it starts off at the end of a previous story, which I don't have, which Isis is, is taking off, flying away, leaving behind Andrea Thomas's mother and Andrea Thomas's boss, Rick Mason. And they are both concerned for Andrea Thomas because she has gone missing because uh, Isis has decided to forego her Andrea Thomas identity to remain uh, uh, permanently as Isis so that she can do do more good, help more people. But it's, it is costing her uh, some psychological. Here she's taken off and while the, while the folks are back, back there and there, because the, uh, uh, 
Rick Mason is suspicious. He thinks ISIS may have had something to do with the disappearance of Andrea Thomas. Remember, he, she doesn't know of Andrea Thomas's dual identity. And it is only granted she looks just exactly like uh, Andrea Thomas in the face, but it is, it is her magic powers which um, makes her not look like Andrea Thomas to everyone else. And here she is at... Uh, um, there had been a, a, some conflict and a fire, forest fire here, and she is re uh, restoring this forest where the fire was. These uh, here, these uh, uh, um, forestry type people were coming through to examine the damage, and meanwhile, ISIS is is restoring the fire and says, while well, they want her to, uh, hey, she could do this, do this to so much more. Says no, she can't. All, only things that are have been naturally done, so like such as the fire, because her her powers are limited that way, and uh, so Rick Mason is kind of suspicious. He wants to check something out. He goes to uh, the museum, the museum in the city, and here you have a really nice background here. The interior of this museum as Rick Mason goes up the stairs into the Egyptian section, and he's trying to find some information, and and here it is. Beware, Rick Mason, your first step into the dark corridors of the abyss of the past may be your last. And here we see this little pyramid with this sinister looking face right on it. And this encased in this in this case. Meanwhile, uh, Isis is at nighttime here, cruising through the city, thinking thinking about her decision to forego her identity as Andrea Thomas. Meanwhile, again, it's more of the hieroglyphs. And he is reading, and he finds an origin to Isis. And we have a flashback here. This this artist, um, I'm really unfamiliar with him, but he did some really had some really nice figures and backgrounds and good visual storytelling. And this, this, this lovely fig female figure right here. And here is the Serpent King. Uh, Serpenhotep, Serpenhotep, however you pronounce his name, and he has taken over this, uh, taken over Egypt. He's the absolute ruler, and there's this good, uh, good wizard. He's and this guy's a tyrant, tyrant, and he has subdued this the wizard in the coils of these magical serpents. And this uh, the servant girl comes up. She wants to help him, and so he he. And bestows upon her a portion of his powers, which is the, and her name is Isis. This is the origin of, of Isis, and uh, this is reminiscent of, uh, how Captain Marvel got hit got his powers from Sh from Shazam. So there she is. She's empowered and goes see Serpentotep, confronts him, and he, and she is. Uh, and wrapped by the by the serpents just as the wizard is and they're able to use their powers together to uh, in the process freeing the wizard um, banishing the serpents and together they banish Serpenotep into this pyramid there's then she eventually get becomes old and uh, uh, bequeaths her power to her uh, to her descendants which is where, and Andrea Thomas is a descendant and reincarnation of this Isis. But that tells him more about Isis, but nothing about uh, what happened with with uh, with Andrea Thomas. Meanwhile, Serpent, Serpent Hotep is encased in this little pyramid, and his power powers come out, and he's seeking a host. And he latches onto Rick Mason, transforming Rick Mason into Serpent Hotep himself. Ah, this great image here, and a nice, nice way of depicting this transition. And this great image here, as he is Serpent Hotep, completely. And uh, this image here really reminds me of uh, the Boris Karloff uh, from the Mummy, and I suspect that's where that image. That face it really came from, and here he is, free, free. Here, this is a really nice image, and we see, we see the face of Rick Mason now encased in that, uh, in that pyramid. So he leaves the museum, saying he wants to learn about this world. 
he has um, uh, all of Rick Mason's memory, so he and, and knowledge. And here he he's, he's detects ISIS wandering through the city, and he he creates a, a menace. Has this couple here walking around the city, and this uh, sconce um, causes the sconce to fall, and ISIS uh, restores it and and saves them. And then she she is off again, and she do, she doesn't see Serpentine, but he sees her. So he follows follows her through the city, and re, uh, return uh, takes on the image of Rick Mason again. A nice nice transition there. So she Isis is secluded here up on the roof of this building, um, thinking about her past decisions and her life. When this little girl comes up and and greets her, and they they talk and say. And she's talking about her, about herself and her future, and she tries to encourage this little girl about her future. And then, while they're, they're talking, something happens. Something's happening, and the little girl starts transforming into a serpent and wraps around Isis, and she is she's horrified. Oh my gosh, what's going on? And this this rings a bell in her memory. But she uses her magic powers. To restore the little girl to herself and hear the shrieks throughout the streets and she and she's off again and seeing seeing all these people being turned into serpents along the streets and uh, she they leave a path she, and uh, she just follows the path restoring everyone back to their human forms and it leads right to the museum and Serpenotep himself and now she really the doors of her memory are opened. She remembers her original life as Isis. She remembers uh, conflict with Serpenhotep. And she blasts him. But he is, he's too powerful. So she manages to get, she's got to re-encase him, re-imprison him. And just as she gets, gets inside, gets just before the, uh, that pyramid in which Serpenhotep had been, been, and, encased he encases her in a plastic sarcophagus because he has scientific knowledge of of um <clears throat> rick mason and so he knows about plastics and he knows that plastic plastics is not a a, a a natural form and so her powers are useless against it but she's also andrea thomas who is a science teacher and using her knowledge of science she is able to uh, compress and pressurize the in the interior with the atmosphere causing pressure inside this sarcophagus and shattering it utterly freeing her and then she is, she again assaults Serpenotep blasting him and he is Serpenotep is gone and restoring Rick Mason, but something's not right here. You can see from that image right there, something's not right. And uh, after that, there she she is walking out with with Rick Mason, cons and considering returning to her her uh, Andrea Thomas um, identity, thinking she has she has room for for both Isis and Andrea Thomas and perhaps a relationship with Rick Mason but something's not right because we look see right over here where Serpentinotep's image should be it's still the face of Rick Mason and this is the story is continued to the next issue so that's not really Rick Mason that is really Serpentinotep in the form of Rick Mason dun 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 what's going to happen what is going to be the resolution of this story? We don't know. I don't know because I don't have the next issue. As there was some really nice artwork, he did some really, really nice figures and backgrounds. Great storytelling. I think the story was was real cr well crafted and well paced. I like the flashback sequence, and I, I really like that face there. And I think it's Boris Karloff. It's a it's a fun read, and if you if you're unfamiliar with 
Mighty Isis. This could be a good introduction to her for you if you can find can find these these old issues cheaply. I don't know where they might have been reprinted if if they have been. It's a, it is a lot of fun and it it's actually much better written than the TV series, but the TV show was fun too, but it's, it was very very simple and for kids and an extremely low budget. So I hope you liked it. Share it with your friends, especially if they happen to li to uh, be like Isis and uh, that nostalgia stuff. It's a lot of fun. Share with your friends. Like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you. And remember, comics are art.